You know a Freddie Calhoun? Sure, I know Freddie. Freddie needs money to get out of town. Says he's prepared to blow the whistle on a primo reefer distribution ring. Says he Has can... Has he said how much it's going to cost? 50 bucks. And the department will front me the 50? You can put in an expense claim. He's over at Mike Lyman's on Hollywood Boulevard. See what you can find out. Door knocking all morning. But I got to make in the car in the end. I have faith in the Lord. Do you the Lord? 50 bucks? Do they think I'm made of money? No, you just look like you're made of money. Oh, very good. The kid's on form. I'd say on a scale of dull to scintillating, you're a solid tedious today, which you can be pleased with. Do you ever listen to yourself? I don't have the same voices in my head as you do, Cole. That's the guy. I heard he's an honest cop. Now there's an oxymoron for you. This guy was willing to rat his own mother after I'd sweated him. Do I need to find someone to look after me? I don't care. I don't go in for letting gangsters off scot free. I don't mind that you're talking, so long as you don't mind that I'm not listening. I want to meet Joe's buddy. That's right. How are we going to look getting around in this thing, Cole? Get this. Middle of the afternoon, this crazy woman decides to set fire to the hotel she lives in. The fire brigade come and put it out. A couple hours later, she does it again. Phones up Central and says, I've set fire to my hotel twice today. You'd better come and get me. <laughs> Did they send some uniforms around to get her? No, that's the best part. The desk sergeant, he gets his share of crank calls, says, all right, Lady Nero, why don't you come on down here? An hour later, she shows. Hair still smoking, clothes smoldering, smelling like a brush fire. <laughs> It's much more fun with the siren on, Phelps. What the hell? Going to the Mocambo this Friday? Oh, 
There's a little sneak. That's him in the back, Cole. God damn it all, I asked them to hold the mayo. That's one heck of a Sunday. Freddy, you're looking good. You're gonna help me, right? That's what I'm here for. You got the money? The 20? Sure, yeah. right here. 20? I said- You want the money or the alternative? Tell us about the reefer, Freddy. Who's he? Another good Samaritan, answer the question. Grass comes from Tijuana. They bring in 50 pounds a week. 50 pounds? Are you hallucinating, Freddy? Get stashed at a house at 1452 North Las Palmas. Names, Freddy. The guy at the house is a spick that goes by the name Juan Garcia Cruz. Well, be careful. He likes guns. Now, do I get my money? Do me a favor, Freddy. Spend the money on a bus ticket. You can't last forever on a snitch jacket. Let's go visit this cruise character. 50 pounds of dope. Crazy. Root beers all around, doll. You believe his story? Sure. A hophead like Freddy would raffle his sister for his next score.
for help. I'll try and find a way in. Officers need help at 1452 North Las Palmas. Shots fired and officers need help at 1452 North Las Palmas. Roger, Robbie K. Audience, officers need help at 1452 North Las Palmas. Officers need help at 1452 North Las Palmas. Shots fired. It is to handle identify code 3. Throw out the guns. you politely to move on. Next time I won't be so nice. You guys don't have to leave a mess. What happened? Dope peddler, Juan Cruz. You open fire and you know, the rest of the story tells itself. Is this a drug or a village in Borneo? Doesn't appear to be in Spanish. Juan Garcia Cruz. This is his address, but this place looks like a front. A silver dollar. I thought they took these things out of circulation. Not now, Phelps. Never the same, are they? regular meals anymore junkies feeding on popcorn and grasshoppers living on soup operator give me dispatch putting you through now Cole Phelps badge 1247 I need an address on a Parnell Soup Company, a head office or factory in the Los Angeles area. Just a second, detective. Only one address listed, 6310 Fountain Avenue. Thanks, ma'am.
Maybe these are the guys keeping Juan so well stocked with soup. Probably nothing. I don't think so. seen it all. Detectives, you'll want to come meet Mr. Fickman, the neighbor. Sounds like he's got something for you. Detectives Phelps and Durrell, we were told Always you... knew they were up to no good. Son of a bitch spent more time in the chicken coop than in his house. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's very helpful. And next time you witness suspect behavior through the crack in your curtains, Please call us before something like this happens. And I thought this was such a nice area. Tell me anything. Circumstantial. Now we're getting somewhere. More soup? Who in the hell keeps a secret stash of soup? You hungry or something, Phelps? I'd say that's pretty good value for 12 cents. Factory sealed. Someone at the cannery has a lot of explaining to do. With Juan dead, we need a new suspect, Cole. Is there a pattern to the deliveries? This guy EJ seems to be bringing in most of the serious weight. Dates and times seem pretty regular. We should notify the border crossing. Those fuckers are probably in on it. Let's wait and see how this plays out.
Crowther says the morphine is still turning up. Makes sense. We have no idea how much of the stuff Lenny shifted. There's been no comeback from Cohen as yet. Maybe Confidential Magazine is right, and Bugsy is on the slide. You read that stuff? I wouldn't say it to his face if I was you. That is one hot-tempered son of a bitch. Right. Let's see if we can find out who's been over-seasoning the soup in this place. LAPD. Who owns this factory, ma'am? Mr. Parnell. Uh, Howard Parnell. I'll let him know you're here. Please, take a seat. If you don't mind, we'll come with you. If you must. You just wanted to follow her, didn't you? You sly dog. I must apologize for my partner's roving eye. He hates saying goodbye, but he loves watching them leave. Give it a rest, Roy. If you could show these men in to see Mr. Parnell, Doris. They're from the LAPD. Follow me, gentlemen. What is going on? LAPD. Sit tight, fatso. You could be in very serious trouble. There's no reason to be rude. Take a seat, gentlemen. I'm sure we can sort this all out. Maybe you can explain why we found $5 bags of marijuana in sealed Parnell soup cans. That's an outrageous allegation. How do you explain it, chubby? We found at least 30 cans, all sealed up tight with your label on them. Can I get a list of your employees? Of course. We have nothing to hide. Doris, can you bring me in the current employee listing? Here it is, Mr. Parnell. On the desk, please. Any name on that list that rings a bell? This is familiar, 1452 North Los Palmas, a Jorge Garcia Cruz. The factory sealed cans we found suggest a very professional operation, Mr. Parnell. We're looking for an inside man. I know nothing about this. I want this stopped as much as you do. Tell me what I want to know, Parnell, or I will have half the LAPD down here tearing this place apart. You're hiding something. Am I right in thinking you would not want to pursue misdemeanors outside your drug case? Depending on what you call a misdemeanor, we might be prepared to turn a blind eye. The truth is I employ a lot of illegals. No one wants to do menial work anymore. Most of my factory staff are wetbacks. The local blacks and Chicanos all want jobs in aircraft factories. Presumably because the pay is a lot better. How are your sales, Mr. Parnell? Just fine and dandy, son. We're entering a new era of prosperity. 
I hope you're both big soup eaters. Mr. Parnell, do you know what kind of trouble you're in? Come clean with us. Okay, so things are a little flat. We're deciding whether to lower production. It's taken a while to adjust to not having any military contracts. You know, we sold Uncle Sam five million cans of minestrone. Ever heard of Juan Garcia Cruz? Not that I know of. He has a brother employed here. You know him? We employ large numbers of Mexicans. I, I'm not familiar with them all. That's funny, Parnell. He has the same address as his brother Juan, who we shot dead less than an hour ago. You better give me something. Look, I'm not involved in this. I'm getting enough grief from Washington. There's an investigation going on into profiteering, like a guy shouldn't be able to turn a buck while the war is on. I'm sure thousands of dead Marines sleep soundly knowing that you did okay. Tell us about Jorge Garcia Cruz. Jorge? I had no idea of his last name. His team does daily maintenance on the conveyor belts and cookers. So he's here now? No, maintenance is at night. Uh, night shift finishes around midnight. He would usually come in around 9 p.m. and have everything ready for the morning shift at 6. We'd like to take a look around the factory floor, Mr. Parnell. I hope we won't have to shut down the line. No, nothing like that. Thank you. I'm grateful for that. I'll show you around myself. I hate seeing how things are made. This is going to be like that time I went to the slaughterhouse and couldn't eat steak for a week. This is where the produce comes in. We peel and sort all of the vegetables and add them to the line in regular quantities. Fascinating. Why don't you keep quiet? I've learned something. Oh, good God. This really is turning into some nightmare school trip flashback. This is the hopper, which boils and purees the vegetables. The other hopper is for the pasta. This way, please. You're loving this, aren't you, Phelps? The soup is ladled automatically into cans. Next stage is labeling. I'd like to see the packing and dispatch area, if you don't mind. Sure. It's over here. Follow me. This is one of our dispatchers. Sergio, right? Yes, sir. These men are from the LAPD. Sergio here records our outgoing deliveries. They all go in the book. Just there, on the desk. Isn't that the cop who solved the case and got promoted? We're looking for repeat business in large amounts, Cole. What's going on, Parnell? There's enough soup going to this place every day to feed a company of Marines. What are you talking about? Can I have a look at that coin? Sure, why not? Silver dollar, right? Yeah, that's right. The markings on it say it's been taken out of circulation. Maybe. I'm not trying to buy anything with it. I like it. Brings me luck.
Do you have access to the canning area? I do. But I keep to my station. Loading and unloading. Don't care much for soup. Sergio, if you don't give me something, I'm going to go to Immigration Services and have you deported. I get a shipment once every two weeks. Ernesto does the driving. I don't know his full name. Gets delivered here at night, or he gets it canned up. From here, it gets sent all over the country. What do you know about the 20th century market? Nada. I get the orders from upstairs. I send the goods where I'm told. And you don't know Juan Garcia Cruz? No, not me. You're a liar, Sergio. You're in it, and I'm going to break you for it. You're loco, Blanca. I got nothing to do with Juan Garcia. We found a matching silver dollar on Juan Garcia. What are the odds of that, Sergio? Juan and Jorge are in brothers. They're cousins. They work for some evil gabacho. The guy is an aberration. He gives out the silver dollars. Jorge gets me a list of deliveries every morning. 20th century is always on there. You keep your mouth shut for today and I don't take you in. Do we have a deal? Do I have a choice? Is that a serious question? That's it for now, Sergio. If we need to speak to you again, we'll put in a call to Mr. Parnell. If you have to, I guess. We will be in touch, Mr. Parnell. It is imperative that things appear as normal here. Keep an eye on Sergio in case he gets tempted to blow the whistle. Thanks, I'll do that. You're going to overlook my little immigration problem, aren't you? Cheer up, fatso. We're gonna let you go on squeezing these poor saps a little while longer. Well, until some commie union types infiltrate this place. I am glad to be out of that place. I never knew fresh vegetables could smell so bad.